I have hope, because without hope it is impossible to live. Václav Pavel, the poet, the playwright, the dreamer, the revolutionary. The Václav Havel Prize for Creative Dissent. Because dissenting is the best verb to conjugate liberty. This award is hope and a message to those voices that are out there that no one is speaking for them. Dictatorship is not a political issue. It is a moral issue. Governments and dictatorships are so scared of art. They want to close my mouth because I choose the most peaceful tool to criticize them. I choose poetry versus words. Theater has good power. We have good power to provoke emotions and start the debate immediately. So I would like to dedicate this award for the voiceless. Even though we may be going through great darkness, it's up to us to realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Václav Havel said, hope is not the conviction that things will turn out right, but the certainty that what we do, we do without caring what the result will be. And we together can change our society. side of Iron Curtain, uh, I mean east of Iron Curtain, um, Václav Havel was one of the brightest symbols of intellectual vigor and moral resistance to communist dictatorship. During his remarkable life, Václav Havel has played many roles. He was a Democrat devoted to the cause of freedom and human rights. He was a dissident, fighting communist regime in Czechoslovakia, and he was spending years in jail for that. He was a very successful statesman as the first president of new independent Czech Republic. He was also a famous poet, playwright, and a philosopher. But above all, he was a truth teller. In his essay, The Power of the Powerless, he described the concept of living in truth. That is, an wavering commitment to living according to one's belief in democracy and civil liberty. Our theme this year, Truth Ignited, strongly resonates with Havel's idea. At our Freedom Forum, we celebrate powerful stories that spark actions around the world in service of truth. Tomorrow is Václav Havel's birthday. Today, we honor his legacy by amplifying the voices of those who speak truth to power no matter the personal cost. And awarding the Václav Havel Prize for Creative Dissent to activists who creatively unmask the deception of dictatorship. Last year, as you know, we had to cancel our event in Oslo. And as a result, we awarded our prize virtually to three laureates. 
Saudis, political satirist, Omar Abdulaziz. Rwandan singer and peace and reconciliation activist, Kizito Mihigo, who received this prize posthumously because he was killed in prison by Rwanda's dictator henchmen. And Chinese dissident artist, Badu Chao. For Badu Chao, this perilous journey into the living in truth began at early age, when as a teenager, he realized the fanatical level of censorship around the 1989 Tiananmen massacre. Instead of becoming um, a lawyer, a reputable and safe job, he became an artist, far less rewarding, but far more dangerous career choice in communist China. He is well known for his political cartoons that are widely shared on Twitter. For years, his artwork has revealed the heinous crimes of Chinese communist regime, rallied support for Hong Kong pro-democracy movement, advocated on behalf of political prisons in China, and lately helped to expose the lies of Chinese government about COVID-19 pandemic. In a dictatorship, this kind of courageous activism often comes up with a very steep price. And not surprisingly, he was not eager to reveal his identity and uh, decided to appear in public wearing uh, a ski mask that covered his face. But all, that all changed in 2019 when he bravely decided to reveal his true identity. Now, of course, he lives in Australia in exile. But his artwork still remains at the forefront of spreading awareness about never-ending humorous abuses in China, Hong Kong, Tibet, Vigo region. Furthermore, beyond China, his art has shined spotlight, a spotlight on pro-democracy demonstrations in Burma and Thailand. Let me emphasize what we all know. Protest art can galvanize and sustain a movement. And this Václav Havel Prize for Creative Descent Laureate has made history by inspiring countless millions of people to keep their hopes, their faith in democracy and freedom alive. So let's give the warmest welcome to Badu Chow. It is such a pleasure and honor to be here and talking to everyone here. Firstly, please allow me to thank you, Gary, to give me this extraordinary prize. I'd like to... Actually, this prize would be extraordinarily meaningful to me 
because it's actually, the shape of it is inspired by the very statue that in 1989, when the Chinese students and citizens are doing this massive protest against Chinese government. And I like to call a proposal to Gary, actually, if he will be so kind to teach me how to play chess and beating <laughs> Xi Jinping. I would like to teach him how to draw a satire cartoon against Putin. <laughs> In 1989, as you see, there's massive people are doing the protest there. But this history and this period of truth are wiped by the Chinese government. I think today we have a scene about truth is exactly the time that I want to share in this very unique story about Tiananmen Massacre and about how it influences people today. So on the 4th of June, the Chinese government sending the soldiers cracking down the students. As you can see from the pictures, there's fire behind there's machine guns in their hands. There are tanks on the street, crushing students and civilians. And the very next day, there's no more protests on the square or in the street of Beijing. But soldiers with machine guns on this deadly, empty square. It is a sad moment. The funny thing is, there is this TV reality celebrity and politician from America once called the Chinese government action is actually power of strength. And I assume the Chinese government just think the same. So they create a very special batch of watch that they use the watch as a prize to giving the killer soldier to show the strength of power. However, after a couple of days, they realize this is not a symbol for strength of power. This is the criminal evidence that in the future, we can put Chinese government into the court to prove the brutality against humanity. And they realize it, and they starting to censor all the information about the Tiananmen Massacre, or in their words, a cracking down to keep China peaceful. But this watch is taking away from the history. It is so rare that we only see the photos. We never get a chance to see the real object. So I did a cartoon to telling the world what this watch really means it is soaked in blood. A couple months ago, there is an auction house in London called The Fellows. They actually find a watch, and they are going to throw an auction on this object. I have a very complex feeling for this very thing. So when I go through their website, I'm shocked, sad raged because there's not enough respect to a historic object like that. On their website, there is a male model wearing a watch just like he's wearing a Rolex. For me, this is over the line. So I post about this auction on Twitter and other social media. Then a lot of people is echoing with my calling. Then there's media coverage from BBC Guardian. There's a public backlash against it. So the auction house decided to withdraw the selling. It is a good thing because I think object like this deserves proper treatment. It is not object for profit, but for, for, but for public well-being, for the memory, the least thing that we should forget. Not just for Chinese, but everyone around the world because human rights are universal.
But for me, this is good, but that's not good enough. Because I want to have the watch. The we Chinese doesn't want to have the watch, so we can present it properly, restore it properly, so we can tell the story. The Chinese government tries best to let people forget about it. I emailed the auction house. I say, I and my fellow dissident will be willing to pay whatever the price that you name. We just want the watch. We can get it privately. We understand you may doing business in China, but the watch means so much. Would you consider private sale, and we will meet your price? The auction house said no, 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 because they do not want get into this anymore, because they want to use this PR strategy to silence it, because they know it potentially will jeopardize the Chinese market, or they just want to keep distance from political matters. This is a very coward action, irresponsible. And I was so sad that day that it's good that we stopped the auction, but it's bad that maybe this very important evidence will lost in the strain of the history forever. But something miracle happened. There's another guy. He read about an article from the Guardian, and he said, "I just have a same watch," and he posted it on Twitter. So I followed up again. I messaged him, sir. I'm a Chinese design artist. You know, this watch means so much for my people because we can use it to prove the massacre. We do not want it for economic profit. We want it for public well-being. We want to remember the massacre. Would you be so kind to sell the watch to us? We would like to pay whatever the price you name. And that gentleman replied me, "Okay, this is meaningful. I will give you this free. Give me the address. I will mail it to you tomorrow." <laughs> this is extraordinary, generous, courage, but also inspiring. So the next day, I have the watch, and today. I'll be able to take it here and show you. This is the end of this story, but I just want to share because I think it reflects so many aspects of our society today. We have authoritarian government committed horrible crime, and they try to hide it. Wipe it off from the history. We also have very greedy organizations, companies, corporations, not just from China, but also from the West, who do not really care about the history or respect to the human rights, but making a profit. And this does not just refer to the auction house; it is also about all the companies that making a profit in China with forced labor from Uyghur community. And more. But what is more important is that individual. In the end, he used his generosity, his kindness, to change this circumstance, so that I can bring the watch today and share the story. And I believe that person is also everyone here on the stage and on the audience seat. They're coming here to listen to me. That gives me hope. Motivation. So thank you for coming here. <laughs> Lastly, I want to represent this new body of work, which is a five-paint posters that against the Beijing Olympic next year. From this work, you will see. All the crime against humanity from the Chinese government, from the total surveillance on its own citizen, to the COVID virus spreading to the world because its early censorship, to what it has been done to the Tibetan community, 
and also to the Hong Kong community and Uyghur community. I want to share this work with you. And I want everyone to actually own the image, that it is for free, and you can just scan and download all the image, so that you can continue the story and share the story with your friends, family, community. And that's how we can make a change as individual. And very soon, I hope to drop this body of image as NFT so that I can have more support to bring this body of work to more cities to let more people to knowing the story behind. Thank you.